Our next presenter, Dr. Giacomo Montagna, will present Oncologic Outcomes Following Omission of Axillary Lymph Node Dissection in Node Positive Patients Downstaging to Node Negative with Neoadjuvant Chemotherapy. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present our study. These are our disclosures. So in node positive patients that are treated with neoadjuvant chemotherapy, four prospective studies have demonstrated that the false negative rate of sentinel lymph node biopsy exceeds the 10% considered clinically acceptable. As all patients in these four studies had an axillary lymph node dissection, they did not provide data on axillary recurrence. And although single center studies have demonstrated that the rate of axillary recurrence after sentinel lymph node biopsy alone um, is very low. These studies are, are, are limited by a small sample size and, are, and concerns about generalizability. We know that dual tracer mapping, removal of three or more sentinel lymph nodes, or the combination of sentinel lymph node biopsy with retrieval of the sample clip lymph node, also known as target axillary dissection or TAD, reduce the false negative rate. But whether the reduction observed with um, with that in terms of false negative rate translates into significant reduction in the rate of axillary recurrence is unknown, and currently there is no consensus on which axillary staging procedure should be used in this setting. So the aims of our study were to evaluate rates of axillary, local regional, and any invasive recurrence in a large real-world cohort of node-positive patients who achieve another PCR after neoadjuvant chemotherapy and where axillary lymph node dissection was, was omitted and we're also to compare rates of axillary recurrence after sentinel lymph node biopsy with dual tracer mapping versus TAD. We included T1 to 4 biopsy proven and 1 to 3 breast cancer patients who achieved another PCR after neoadjuvant chemotherapy and had either sentinel lymph node biopsy with dual tracer mapping or TAD defined as image guided localization of the sample clip lymph node in combination with the sentinel lymph node biopsy procedure with or without dual tracer mapping. And to ensure familiarity with the, with the procedure, a minimum of 10 cases per institution was required. We excluded patients who had an axillary lymph node dissection, those who had inflammatory breast cancer or stage 4 disease at presentation, and those with less than one year of follow-up. We collected data from 25 centers in 11 countries. Most of the centers were within the Oncoplastic Breast Consortium and the U-Breast Networks. Clinical and treatment variables, including um, pathologic characteristic of the, the primary tumor, surgery, systemic therapy, radiation dose, and treatment fields were collected from prospectively maintained databases. And we compare clinical pathological characteristics between the two groups using the Wilcoxon round sum test, chi square test, and Fisher exact test. And we did a competing risk analysis to compare cumulative incidence rates of axillary recurrence, local regional recurrence, and any invasive recurrence the finest local regional distance between the two groups. And uh, the way we compared the two groups was by using the, the GRACE test. We collected data from 1,282 patients treated between April 2013 and December 2020, and we excluded 138 cases that did not meet inclusion criteria or were not consecutive. And finally, we were able to include 1,144 consecutive patients. 666 of them had sentinel lymph node biopsy, and the remaining 478 had target axillary dissection. In the sentinel lymph node biopsy group, all patients had dual tracer mapping, and in 23% of them, a clip was placed at the time of diagnosis, and removal of the clip was confirmed at the time of surgery in 86% of them without localization. The median follow-up was 4.2 years. In the TAD group, dual tracer mapping was not required. The clip node was removed in 99% of cases, and localization was performed with a radioactive seed in 72% of cases, with a wire in 24%, with ultrasound in 2% of cases, and in the remaining 1.9%, a combination of techniques or max seed were used. And the median follow-up was 2.7 years in this group. So this table shows you the clinical pathological features stratified by surgical groups and highlight those that were different between the two groups. And as you can see, median age was 50. The majority of patients had clinically T2 and one tumor presentation, and we noticed some difference in terms of race and ethnicity. The majority of patients had poorly differentiated ductal carcinomas, 
there were more poorly differentiated tumors in the sentinel lymphonode biopsy group, 76 versus 65 percent, and 54 percent of patients had HER2 positive. There were no difference in terms of histology, receptor subtype, or presence of LVI. Just um, over half the patient had breast conservation, and 66% of patients had breast PCR, with similar rates between the two groups. And although the majority of patients received anthracycline taxane-based chemotherapy, and all HER2-positive tumor received anti-HER2 therapy, women in the TAD group were more likely to receive platinum-based regimens. And the, the race differences and the differences in neoadjuvant chemotherapy regimens that we noticed were geographically related Fewer lymph nodes were removed in the TAD group. The median number of sentinel lymph nodes removed was four in the sentinel lymph node biopsy group versus three, and the mean number of total lymph nodes was 4.4 in the sentinel lymph node biopsy group and 3.9 in the TAD group, and these differences were statistically significant. The use of breast and chest wall radiation did not differ between groups, but women in the TAD group were more likely to receive nodal radiation, 85% versus 78%. And we're also more likely to receive adjuvant chemotherapy, mostly capecitabine. And there were no difference in terms of adjuvant um, endocrine therapy and adjuvant anti 2 therapy. The three and five year rate of any axillary recurrence were low, 0.65 and 1% respectively. And as you can see from the overlapping curves, there was, at three years, there was no statistical difference between the two groups, 0.5% versus 0.8%, very similar. Over the study periods, there were four isolated axillary recurrence, two in each group, and all these four patients had N1 disease at presentation. Three of them had their two-positive disease, one had triple negative, and only one of these four patients had nodal radiation. The three- and five-year rates of local regional recurrence were also low, 1.5% and 2.7% respectively. And at three years, again, we noticed no difference between TAD and sentinel lymph node biopsy, 0.8 versus 1.9%. Finally, the, five, the three and five year rates of any invasive recurrence defined as local regional or distance were 7.5 and 10%. And again, we noticed no difference between the two groups, 7.3% in the TAD group and 7.8% in the sentinel lymph node biopsy group. Our study is the first to compare outcomes after sentinel lymph node biopsy and TAD. Other strengths include the large number of consecutive patients and the multicenter design, as well as the setting as patients were treated both in large academic institutions as well as small breast units. Limitations are due to the retrospective design and to the difference in the median follow-up between the two groups, which limited the comparison at three years. So in conclusion, early axillary recurrence after omission of axillary lymph node dissection in patients that start out as node positive and convert to node negative with neoadjuvant chemotherapy is a very rare event and was not significantly lower in TAD than in sentinel lymph node biopsy in spite of more TAD patients receiving nodal radiation. However, longer follow-up is needed. Compared to sentinel lymph node biopsy, TAD allowed for removal of fewer lymph nodes. Whether this difference is, is clinically meaningful and whether TAD is cost-effective is unknown. These results support omission of axillary lymph node um, dissection in patients who successfully downstage to node negative with neoadjuvant chemotherapy. An ongoing prospective study will provide further insight to whether arm function and lymphedema rates differ after different staging procedures. Thank you. Okay, we will start with an online question. Please comment on the use of the MARI procedure, mapping after radioactive iodine, written about from the Dutch removal of only the clipped nodes and low false negative rate. We did not include um, MARI patients because current guidelines don't recommend MARI. Can I do in person? We'll start with number six this time. Thanks very much. Number five. Sorry, Vogel, New York. Thanks very much for a very nice presentation. <clears throat> so there were presumably mostly two groups, HER2 positive and triple negative in your study, very few ER positive, HER2 negative patients get a path CR. <clears throat> what was the nature of the cancer in the local and uh, the axillary recurrences? Were they mostly triple negative? 
and did the two procedures come out equal for the, the population of triple negative patients where the systemic adjuvant therapy is much less effective than for HER2 patients? So 54% of patients had HER2 positive tumors, 23% had triple negative, and the remaining 23% had hormone receptor positive HER2 negative tumors. And as I show, of the four isolated axillary recurrence, three of them happen in HER2 positive tumors and one in triple negative. Thank you. Microphone three. Um, hi, Chris Cartledge, Edinburgh, United Kingdom. I'm interested in the group of patients who had sentinel node biopsy, but where the clipped node was not retrieved. Did any of those patients have a recurrence? So we did not look at this specifically because the only 23% of patients in the sentinel lymphoma biopsy group had a clip. What we look at was how often in the 23% was the clip removed, and it was 86%. But the, um, the two recurrences that occurred in the sentinel lymphoma biopsy group, I, I actually don't know if the, the clip was removed or not. I believe it was, they, they didn't have a clip at the, at the beginning to begin with. Okay, we'll take another online question. Our current paradigm for a sentinel lymph node biopsy after neoadjuvant chemotherapy is to default to axillary dissection if we don't encounter three nodes. What is your approach if only the clipped node is found and has converted to negative? So if you only find one node and it's the clip node, you know that the false negative rate is very low, ranging between 2 and 4 percent. And so the current approach is that if we localize, if we, see, if we take an x-ray of the specimen and we do see the clip, we don't dissect. Microphone two. Shelley Feldman from Montefiore in New York. Thank you for an excellent presentation. I have two questions. One is, can you elaborate on the mode of detection of the axillary recurrences? Was there, was there routine axillary ultrasound where these were clinically palpable nodes? And number two, was axillary reverse mapping allowed in these patients since that may impact on your final analysis in terms of lymphedema incidence? So this was a, a large multicentric retrospective study, so we don't have granularity data on how the axillary recurrence was detected, and I also don't have data on reverse mapping, unfortunately. Because I think the... Uh, I think the uh, mode of detection of the recurrences is, is an important issue which is not described in many studies. And I do believe that many patients have subclinical axillary recurrences which we don't know about unless they progress and become large. Uh, because we, I think we do know that many patients with axillary disease, it remains relatively indolent and not important clinically. So I think this is an important factor for many of these studies looking at axillary recurrence in terms of how the recurrences are detected. Thank you. There were so few axillary recurrence that I think I can't find out how they were detected. Thanks. Thank you very much.